Dueling Dialogues is brought to you by our affiliates at hostpapa.com. Click the banner on the rightleftchronicles.com for premium unlimited web hosting with the highest rated reviews at the lowest prices. Coming to you from that once forgotten artery that pulses through the center of the continental United States and into the heart of the Ozarks, Grace Matthews. Looking in from the northern border, our Canadian friend, along with his countrymen, feeling the effects of U.S. political issues, Connor Murphy. Welcome to Dueling Dialogues, episode 119. I'm Connor Murphy, here with Grace Matthews. Hi, Grace. How you doing? Been a while. I know, I know. It's been a crazy couple of weeks, but I'm doing great. How are you? Good. It's been back to business here, too. So I've been super busy working on one of the magazines, and his uh, deadline is today. So been really busy. Oh, you know? yeah. I missed oh, yeah. a lot of news. I know I have. I know, but I've been seeing some great pictures, photographs come out of your your projects. Oh, thank you. Thank you. So, yeah, you're talking uh, about Instagram, right? Yes, I am. Yeah, thank you. Beautiful, beautiful. Yeah, it was a lot of hard work, but uh, well worth it in the end. So. Oh, for sure. I can yeah. see that. Yeah. Talk about hard work. Yes, lots of hard work. Poor Judge Brett Kavanaugh. Yeah, been slung through the mud. I do know that. Oh, my gosh. You know, and these guys, one thing you have to realize is these guys that aspire to be judges, and especially those that aspire to be Supreme Court judges, I mean, they sort of kind of figure that out early. I mean, they do nothing wrong. They don't jaywalk. They don't speed. They don't drink when they're out at a restaurant without a driver. I mean, these are pure people. Yeah, living in their bubble. Yeah. So to hear these people try to manufacture issues on on someone that is so well qualified, it's like you're living in some alternate universe. Well, did you really expect anything different? Because the Democrats, no, I didn't. the Democrats will pick at anything, whether it's right or wrong. They're just gonna pick. So he's like the latest scab that they're picking. That's all. You know, I didn't expect anything different than what happened. I, I guess I still can't get over this place and time we're at in the United States. We, uh, and, and maybe it is worldwide. Yeah, you know, it's with worldwide. Brexit. Oh, yeah. As we are at, at a, a sort of cold war with one another. Pretty much. And, and it is just ridiculous, and I hope it doesn't become something more than that. And I'm starting to fear it is, because it's getting crazy. I mean, they were trying to, first of all, rumor has it that Chuck Schumer made a call over the Labor Day weekend, which was last weekend, Um ahead of these hearings with um, Judge Kavanaugh. Right. And they colluded. You know, they got together, we're gonna ask him this, we're gonna we're gonna, you know, hammer him on this issue and and uh, by the way we need some protesters <laughs> wow. to interrupt things. Mm-hmm. Okay. And we're gonna stop the hearing altogether. <laughs> So you really have some nutty things that happen. They had these protesters were getting, looking down at their phone, okay, one at a time, and I guess they were getting the go-ahead, is, is what the cops said. They were waiting for somebody to pull the trigger. Yeah, and they started yelling and screaming, and it kind of, you know, disrupts things, and they, they arrest them. And what they do the first time is they take them 10 miles away and they find them $50. I don't know if they have to pay right there or they come back and pay. I don't know what they do. <laughs> okay. Okay. And they let them go. So many of them were going back <laughs> and being arrested a second time. And the second time is something like 75 bucks. Okay. okay? Yeah. The third time, supposedly, they have to spend the night in jail. There were some that went for the third time. The okay. first day, there were 73 arrests. The te- second day, 70. Well, of course, each level probably came with some sort of pay raise, right? So you want to get to that top level. 
Well, yeah, if you had to pay the $50 fine, I mean, what were they paying you? Exactly. $200? I mean, I don't know. I, yeah. You know, but it was, you know, by design. It wasn't like these people just showed up because they care so much about whatever their cause is. You're right. They they are basically being paid or promised something. Exactly. We don't know what. Um, I assume money. <laughs> yeah. But the hearings are proceeding. Um, like I said in previous shows, uh, Brett Kavanaugh is not actually, wouldn't have been my first choice, but he's certainly qualified. I'm sure. I mean, and really, when a president is in office, he's going to pick someone that sort of suits his party's agenda. Exactly. Obama did it. Yeah. Bush did it. You know, uh, Bill Clinton did. I mean, they all do. I mean, look, Bill Clinton got, oh, my gosh, who did he do? Ruth Bader Ginsburg. Right. Wow, you got a good and, memory. And and she even came up in her hearings with this um, the concept that I'm not going to answer a hypothetical question. <laughs> well, and that was, that was good. I mean, you know, a, a judge shouldn't answer a hypothetical question, okay? And they sort of labeled it like, you know, she came up with this. I and mean, it's been a standard since then until Trump's picks get in there. And now they don't want to do that anymore. I would not want to play Monopoly with these people. No, not at all. That's for sure. So we will see what happens. Will Kavanaugh make it? Uh, most people think he will because there's enough Republican votes. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. When's it I, over? I wouldn't even bet on it. Uh, uh, I don't know. I think they will go through this week, and then I don't think they're going to vote till next month. Oh, wow. But it has to get out of committee. Right now, that's where it's at, committee. So I guess they will vote out of committee probably next week, and that would set the stage for the whole Senate to vote. I know that uh, I had some friends watch the Kavanaugh hearings because I saw that they commented on Facebook after, and their comments were, wow, this is a screwed up world we live in. That was their comment after watching it, that, that the would, world was broken. I would say that's fair. That's, that's a fair observation. Okay, the New York Times has, again, ticked off the president. Yeah. I'm I mean, sure they got. They, not that they ever went three days without taking off. I'm sure they got a whole bunch of new subscribers too. You know, I wonder how surely because he's right when he calls them the failing New York Times. When he took office, they were failing. I mean, they were like seconds away from. Oh yeah, it was financial bad. failure. Yeah, I kind of think he saved them. Yeah, September fifth or sixth. They published a letter, an anonymous letter, from someone inside the Trump administration. Right. In fact, the title says, I am part of the resistance inside the Trump administration. Hmm. It says, okay. I work for the president, but like-minded colleagues and I have vowed to thwart parts of his agenda and his worst inclinations. Huh. Okay. Now. Is this a disgruntled employee? Is this part of the deep state? Is there this what their is version? Is this their version of QAnon? That could be the answer to that. I mean, their answer to that. Now, this person—it could be a man or a woman—we don't know—claims to be appointed. Now, a lot of people refer to the deep state as um, career employees, meaning those employees that work for you know, different agencies within the government, and it doesn't really matter who's president, they keep their job. Right. Okay? To me, the deep state is greater than that. Um, it, it, it definitely crosses party lines, and it includes people that have influence that don't necessarily work for the government. Correct. And it also includes several center, senators and congressmen. So I was surprised this morning when someone was kind of tearing this article apart that they discussed the deep state as just these career employees. Now, I believe these career employees are the ticket to making the deep state work because you got to have an inside guy. Right. Okay? 
So, uh, you know, but it's very complex, the deep state. Well, they should char- start checking bank accounts for that $12 million. Exactly. That always seems to, it seems to end up in somebody's people. pocket. Yeah. 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 Now, I agree that this person truly wants to be known. Maybe not right now, while he's still working for the government. And if he is appointed, it's it's really interesting who it might be. Now, more than 20 of the president's closest cabinet members and have came out and said, I didn't do it. I didn't do it. You know. Right. It could but be just somebody. It could be just somebody uh, with a big ego. It could be. Wanting it could be fame. a lot. Yeah. yeah, it could be somebody that's not even in there <laughs> yeah, at all. True. But could let's be, face it. Could be the in Russians. Fact, <laughs> you know, uh, the, the President, Trump, uh, um, President Trump tweets this. Does the so-called senior administration official, which is what this person called themselves, really exist? Or is it just a failing New York Times with another phony source? <laughs> if the gutless, anonymous person does indeed exist... The Times must, for national security purposes, turn him in, turn him or her over to government at once. Now, that's ridiculous. I wish he wouldn't do those ridiculous things. Okay. Mm. But does anybody that voted for Trump or did not vote for Trump believe that anything but chaos would often exist in that office, in the White House, with him in office? Right. Exactly. No. I mean, but... You know people that are chaotic, and they get a lot done. Yeah, yeah. And we don't really give a damn here in the middle of America, you know, that he loses his temper, or that he repeats himself, or that he changes his mind. At the end of the day, we care about policy. Right. And these people do not get it. Some of them are so damn full of themselves they honestly think we care about them personally. Well, that's kind of the mindset that is happening nowadays, the snowflake mentality. It is ridiculous. You know, if if I don't like it, you can't do it either. That kind of attitude. Yeah, I mean, it, 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 it just it has become so huge. Yeah. You know, I mean, when you remember the text between the two lovers at the FBI, they were so full of themselves. Yeah. Well, you know, you you almost need to take a step back for a second and look at this for what it is. Somebody just confessed to sabotaging your federal government. Absolutely. I do believe it's treasonous. I don't believe that the New York Times needs to turn over its source. I believe that they probably should have turned this letter over to the FBI and, and probably not published it. Right. I'm publishing it seems wrong. Sounds like you've got faith in the FBI still, though, because I sure don't. <laughs> well, it's all we got. I don't have faith. I mean, but or maybe to the local police department, I should have said. Yeah. Um. You know, and they would just go ahead and turn it over to the FBI. But it, yeah. You know, there is just they are crazy about attacking them. For example. There is a headline on CNN right now that says the 59 missed out of this world lines in Donald Trump's Montana speech. Now, he addressed, my, uh, you know, a group of supporters in Montana last night. Right. You know, and their headline is the 59 missed out of this world lines. Well, yeah. you know, first of all, since when do they take everybody so literally but him? He is held to a much different standard. You know, Obama gets his cocky ass up on the podium this morning and attacks the president. That's off limits. When you're out of office, you are not supposed to give speeches to attack the current president. It's not that you have to like him. Yeah. It's just you care enough about the system that you don't do that. Okay. The president, the office of the president needs to remain stable, okay? Don't rock the boat. Exactly. Even if you know the boat's rocking, don't tip the boat over. Oh, that was a song. Oh, brother. (laughs) (laughs) 
You know, so why are all of our rules, all of our manners been thrown out the window? Yeah, there seems to be double standards that, uh, you know, the, the people that judge and make the decisions also have double standards. Exactly. And, you know, and, and certainly love him or hate him. Trump makes money. Yeah, you guys are in way you know, better condition at, than we Bob, are. Look at Bob Woodard's book. Okay, now this is the the guy that wrote all the president's men. Right. I mean, uh, and, and many other books. You know, um, you know he was he's gosh he's probably eighty something. You know he's going to get a last hurrah here of a few million dollars. Wow. You know, writing a book about Trump. Uh, the president, of course, had something to say about it. The Woodard book is a scam. I don't talk the way I am quoted, and that's true. The quotes don't sound like him. Hmm. If I did, I would not have been elected president. That's probably true. These quotes were made up. The author uses every trick in the book to demean and belittle. I wish the people could see the real fact, and our our country is doing great. Now, I don't believe that Bob Woodard made things up. I do believe... He got quotes and information from people. Secondhand. Second hand. Exactly. And he went with it. Wow. And there, back okay. in the day, I'm not sure he would have went with it. Now, Trump made a big mistake of not meeting with Woodward. Woodward asked ask him to meet. Okay. Well, and everybody knows Bob Woodward. You meet with him before he writes a book about you or before he releases a book. Hmm. That yeah. was a mistake. But I agree with the president. The you know he's not an eloquent speaker, and when you read Woodard's book or even excerpts from it, I think it's a good idea to keep that in mind. Yeah, it's it really doesn't sound like the president. It's kind of like that little game he played uh, sitting around a table as a kid, and you tell one person to the left of you a secret, and it, they pass it on, and by the time it gets back to you, it's a totally different story. Oh, and I love that game. Yeah, I think that's fun. I don't know why we don't play that more as adults. Should it we should. definitely teaches you a lesson. But you know what? Everybody knew what President Trump's pre- um, personality was like. You know, I mean, practically everyone knew who he was, what he was like. Either you knew him from his business, from being a reality TV star, or just running for president. Right. And yeah. he, what you got to remember, he was running up against. 16 of the best Republicans we have. Yeah. And the people chose to go down in Turkey. You know why? We kind of like bad boys. You know why? <laughs> I said that I repeat that. You know why? <laughs> because the bad boys have been very good to us. We made more money in the middle of the country when JFK, Bill Clinton, and Donald Trump have been president than we did with all the other guys put together. Wow. Interesting. Okay? It's not really yeah. about party. The Bad boys, you know, you weren't a woman ever, but, you know, <laughs> back in the day, I remember kind of sort of liking sometimes to date the bad. You know, right, my mother would go, right. that'll get you no good. Yeah. I, I was like, are you crazy? It's a hell of a lot of fun, mother. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, they do stuff, you know, and, and, and you know, get being stuff perfect done. Yeah. and, you know, it's like I always talk about houses, you know. You go look at houses, and if they're perfect, it's like, well, nothing ever happens here, Fawn. Yeah, exactly. Nothing yeah. good ever happened in perfect. Yeah. Because nothing happens in perfect. Exactly. Good point. I like that analogy. Okay. But good news, good news. Remember Andrew McCabe? Yes. I mean, he did a lot of stuff. He, he wasn't necessarily the worst, but... Uh, they have opened up a probe into his activity. Oh. The DOJ. Oh, interesting. We'll see where that goes. Yeah. But uh, I, I believe, correct me if I'm wrong, that's the first probe that has been opened up on the other side of this ugly you yeah. know, game to take down Trump. I yeah. think that is the first one that's been open. So well, hopefully, we are excited to see that. Hopefully they see where the real Russian collusion happened. Exactly. Now, speaking of social media, you are, you know a lot more about social media than I do, but conservatives get censored. There is no doubt about it. There is proof out there. Um, in fact, 
all of the platforms admit it. They, they blame it on algorithms as if algorithms have taken on a mind of their own, you know? Right. Now, the algorithm is really artificial intelligence. Exactly. Just give us a short definition of an algorithm. Well, and... Because People set it up, right? Yeah, it's all mathematical, actually, how an algorithm works. So it it's, comes from algebra, right? So there's some math, but what those parameters are for each mm-hmm. calculation, those are all secret. And the reason they're secret is because you don't want somebody, a competitor, getting a hold of that information and tweaking their website so they show up at number one for every search so those those algorithms are held very very close to the corporation can they be tweaked to absa freaking lootly and i'm they pretty are. sure they are yeah yeah i i noticed it uh probably about 2011 that something was going on here it was just too obvious that the way multi-stream media was starting to sway people's opinions. So I did know, I worked at Google News at that time, so it it's mathematical. So can it be tweaked? Absolutely, and they change it all the time. Yeah, and they admit to tweaking it. And uh, So yesterday they had a hearing with um, one of the congressional, you know, yeah. platforms, and Google didn't show. Wow. Interesting. You know, Google is. I don't. I think it would be hard to say that Google is not a monopoly. Oh my God! They they're probably the biggest monopoly on the planet. They probably have more power than any anyone or anything in the world right now. Well, there's the Rothschilds. So yeah, they're <laughs> probably neck and neck with them. That's honestly, that's where I would probably put them. I mean, because like you said. They can use the algorithms to brainwash people. Yeah, spout their own and, propaganda. Yeah, and and as quickly as people have evolved into whatever we have going today, you have to wonder if that's not where it came from. Yeah, social media exactly, particularly our our Google searches. Now, Twitter and Facebook both showed up and. At one point, a kind of a little, a little funny side story, there was a protester screaming and yelling, she was, and uh, Billy Long, who just happens to be my congressman from this area. In fact, his office is about um, less than a mile from my house. Right. Anyway, he was an auctioneer. So he starts, he's yelling, and he goes, I can't understand what she's saying. I can't understand what he's saying. And suddenly he breaks out into his, his former auction yourself oh, nice. and drowns nice. her out completely and it was uh, hilarious because he was one of the best auctioneers he he had the rhythm that i have ever seen and you know, we have a lot of auctioneers around in this area because we've got lots of antiques and sales and you know yeah, all sorts cool. of stuff i'll have to so, still find that with video. Yeah, you, yeah you do need to look it up on uh, youtube yeah uh, it's funny yeah so Nike, they have chosen to have Colin Kaepernick be their the face of Nike, the spokesperson. I don't know if he's really going to speak, so I hate to use that. Well, Trump's economy is so good, even a guy like Kaepernick can get a job. <laughs> <laughs> well, oh. let me tell you, they lost several billion dollars the first day after this was announced. And they said, well, that's okay, because we are trying to reach that 15 to 17-year-old group. And, you know, how moronic. How many 15 to 17-year-olds can buy $100, 200 you know, I don't know, pairs of Nikes without someone older? Yeah, but... Like the, a parent. But, but the protest was burning the products you bought. I don't think yeah. the protesters really, you know, thought that through at all. You know, I, I don't get it. It was it was kind that of funny. Interesting. Yeah. Yes. But, um, anyway, our one of our local colleges, C of O, College of the Ozarks, they have decided to free the campus of Nike, at least, you know, all the sports teams. Um, they're not going to use Nike anymore. And I, I, I think you're going to see a lot of that. Um, C of O is a religious-based school. Oh, wow. They, 
Certainly, you're not going to see public universities take that kind of measure, but it wouldn't surprise me if you don't see some of that. Right. Some of those Christian-based private institutions say, you know what? Hasta la vista, Nike. Yeah, I I really am, am puzzled to what they were thinking. Like, really? You're, yeah. you're 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 gonna just you know basically cut your customer base in half. You know? Oh I, yeah, I, I yeah. don't understand it, it. Yeah, and their investors certainly didn't understand it, and they certainly didn't fly that by because they started pulling away from them. Like I you know, like I've never seen it in my life. I mean, they really pulled back. We've seen a lot of pullback. You know, there's a lot of, um, on a side note, there's a lot of argument about Amazon just hit a trillion dollars last week. You know, there's already been pullback. So I I realize that. You have Apple who hit a trillion dollars, what, about a month ago? Right. And then you have the Walmart family that is worth a a great deal of money. In fact, they would probably be up there, but they, they have it spread out over their family. Right. Now, a very large percent of employees from Amazon and Walmart have to have food stamps and public assistance from right. people like me paying right. taxes. You know, it would be you, but you're up there in Canada, so. But it's uh, still ridiculous that your employees got to live off of uh, food stamps while you're you're bringing in the billions and the trillions. Exactly. So this. Got out, and there are people from on both sides of the aisle. It's not just Bernie Sanders' issue. Bernie Sanders has a big issue with the Amazon current. But you got um, another guy that's really on this is Tucker Carlson, and there is nothing similar to uh, Bernie about Tucker. I mean, you're talking left and right, you know, um, light years apart. Right. But I do agree that that is absolutely ridiculous. That we yeah. should need to support. Um, these families that are working for these companies and something we need to think about now um, on our next show we're going to talk a lot about upcoming insurance problems okay, okay? you still mm-hmm. having issues with that up there eh? uh, we, we they're getting bigger and oh. worse and they're going to affect people's lives to the point it's not about not being able to afford a policy it's about not having one to purchase at any price. Wow. If you need an individual policy. So when our next show, that's what we're talking about. We're going to go down and dirty on, on the legacy that I don't believe John McCain really wanted to leave. Huh. But he did when he did the thumbs down. So, okay. Well, okay. Well, we can agree there. Yep, but we don't always agree. But life's a journey, and we're all in this together. Thanks for listening. Godspeed, Connor, and Godspeed to all of our friends out there. Godspeed, Grace, and thanks for listening. Dueling Dialogues is brought to you by our affiliates at hostpapa.com. Click the banner on the right left chronicles.com for premium unlimited web hosting with the highest rated reviews at the lowest prices. 